WP Get. Get found. Real people, real solutions. So the purpose of this video is to demonstrate a way of targeting elements uh, with CSS. Um, I see a lot of advice in forums, uh, which I don't agree with. Uh, where people are drawing on their current existing knowledge of CSS and giving that as advice um, for how to do things in Elementor. And while CSS is CSS and the rules of CSS apply regardless whether it's Elementor or anything else, um, the way elements are targeted are a little bit different uh, and uh, there's better ways of doing it uh, than what's often suggested. So. What I'm going to do here is just uh, demonstrate um, how you would target elements. So I'm going to create some elements or some uh, widgets uh, on the page, uh, show you how I target specific elements. Uh, now, initially, for the first part of this, I'm going to talk about features that require Elementor Pro. Uh, so if you don't have Pro, this won't apply, um, but you can still uh, do the end bit, which is where we use classes, uh, CSS classes, rather than directly targeting uh, through um, Elementor. So I'll explain that shortly. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to create some basic content. So I'm just going to put a text editor in this column here. And I'm going to add a, or make the first line there a heading two, and the second line, say a heading three, uh, I'm then going to add a couple of buttons. There we go. Let's duplicate that. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate uh, this whole section. So sorry, this whole column. So we've got two columns, each with a text box or a text editor uh, with a heading two, a heading three. Uh, a paragraph text and two buttons. Now, what I'm going to look at is how can I make the background of buttons red and maybe the heading twos red and how that gets targeted, whether you want to apply it to the entire section, whether you apply it just to a column uh, or whether you want to apply it to a specific widget. So all of those are possible and I'm going to show you the way that we would do this with Elementor, which just makes more sense than what the general advice is that I'm seeing. So to do this, let's stay for an example, we're going to start with the column, sorry, the section. And what I'm typically seeing is someone will say, okay, go into your advanced and give it an ID. So we'll call this the test ID. And then what we'll do is we'll Go down to our custom CSS is we require the pro. If you don't have pro, you won't have this custom CSS. So in the custom CSS, if I create a uh, class for my uh, test ID and then all the heading twos below that, we make them color red. So all our heading twos have gone color red. Uh, if we did test ID, and then button, uh, that doesn't work. Why? Because the buttons in Elementor are not button elements, they're anchor tags. So if we actually have a look, uh, bring up Chrome DevTools by pressing F12, uh, and then actually have a look at one of these buttons, we'll see it's actually an anchor tag, not a button tag. Um, so what we'd want to do is is uh, target the Elementor button class. There we go, and I've set my color to red. Uh, let's make that the background color. Background is red, okay. So these apply because the section ID that we've set here, is test ID. So 
a better way of doing this, and actually, sorry, uh, just backtracking a little bit, if we have a look at where these have applied. So if I select that element there using my selector and uh, Chrome DevTools, and, and I have a look at this uh, H2 element there, I can see down here that it's applied my custom CS rule, uh, hash, test ID, and then all the H2s, and set that to color red. So that's the rule that's been applied. I'm going to show you a better way to do this with, with Elementor. So let's get rid of that ID. And instead, we're going to replace this selector, sorry, this um, ID selector with the word selector. Okay, now the word selector is a keyword specific to Elementor. Let's see how that works as well. Let's have a look over here. We're still looking at that H2 element. And see now, if we look at that, it's actually created a class with Elementor element F2C6443. Okay. So it's translated this keyword selector to this unique class name. So where does it get that from? Well, if we go, remember we're applying this to the section. So if we go up the DOM elements here and we find the section. So we all the way up here to find the section. There's the section there. We'll see that it's got elemental, elemental element F2C 6443. So when Elementor adds a section, a column, a widget, or anything to the DOM, it, get, it creates a unique class name for that, and it applies it to that element, that DOM element. So that's why it works. Now, I'm going to show you a great example. If I take that there and I take that out of the uh, custom CSS, and I only want to apply it to this column, I select the column, go in the advanced, custom CSS, and apply it to that column, and then it's only applied to that column. If I only want to apply it to the text box, I'd select the text box, go into the custom CSS, and apply it to the text box, and it's only applied to the text box. So the selector is basically saying, wherever you've applied this, and then below that. So that's the way you target with Elementor with this unique class that it gives to everything that it sticks on the DOM elements, on the DOM uh, model. So that's pretty, pretty easy to do. Now, let's say you want to apply this a little bit differently. You want to actually use this not just on this page, you want to use it on multiple pages. The way you would do that is I'm going to cut that out of there. And I'm going to go to my site settings. And I'm going to go to my custom CSS. Again, you need uh, Elementor Pro. I'm going to show you how to do this without Pro. Uh, but you need Elementor Pro to do this. Otherwise, you don't get this uh, custom CSS. Um, and we're going to put that there. And instead of using the keyword selector, I'm going to give this a class name. So the class name would be Make Red. OK. Do that there as well. So now I've got a class name called Make Red. Update that. Okay. So now, if I want this section here to be all those elements uh, with the Make Red applied, I just add the set in advance. I just go into there and I make the class uh, Make Red. Okay, let's say I duplicate that section, just, just to show you how this works. So if I duplicate that section, and I only apply make red to the second section. So it's only applied to the section, not that section. Okay, now what if I want to apply it to this column? I just go to that column, and I just go in there, and I make, make red for the whole column. What if I just want to apply it to that text box. Select the text box and put it in there. So that's how targeting works. 
general rule of thumb is that if I'm only going to use something on a single section, a single element, I would use custom CSS, I would use the selector, keyword, whatever elements under it, say it's H3, um, color, blue. Here we go, background color blue. So I made my H3s. Now that's only going to apply to this section because I've applied it to that widget. Whoops. So I applied it just to this widget and the custom CSS there. Okay. All right, so I'm going to get rid of that. So that's hopefully explained that. Now, I did say that I was going to show you how to do this if you don't have Elemental Pro. So what I'm going to do is go back to my site settings, custom CSS, and I'm going to grab that. I'm going to cut that out of there so I no longer have that in my custom CSS. And just to show you how this works, I'm going to disable my Elemental Pro and refresh this page. And now you'll see when I click on these and go to advanced, there is no custom CSS. When I go to site settings, I can't do custom CSS here. So how we do that is we would go into our appearance and customize, and we'd put it into the global CSS in here. So not as intuitive as doing it with the um, Elementor Pro, but uh, if we put it in there, publish that, close that, go back here, refresh this page. And you can see it's applied there. Now if I want to apply it to the whole section, let's grab that class name again. Let's make red, apply it to the whole section. There you go. So it works. Um, if you don't have Elemental Pro, um, you can still do this. You can't use the selector keyword um, to target specific elements or, or columns or sections, um, but you can use your customizer, global CSS, put the rules in there, and you can still apply those rules of CSS classes. So uh, you don't need Pro. Pro is definitely a way to go because it makes it a lot easier. Uh, as you make changes, you can see them in the editor updating. It just makes a lot more sense if you're working with this a lot. So that's pretty much it uh, as far as how we target. Um, now there's one more thing I'll show you, which is figuring out what to target. So I use uh, Google Chrome DevTools a lot. Uh, because what happens is when you put, say, for example, a link, let's just go to a simple link. If I just go to a uh, menu anchor and I put that on the screen there and I give it a name of test. Okay. So you think that's just the typical A tag, right? Just a menu HTML A tag with a ID on it. If I press the F12 to bring up my Chrome DevTools and I look at Select, use the selector and I look at this anchor tag, it's actually more than that. So we've got the uh, empty widget icon, uh, we've then got a widget container, an overlay container, and then we've got above that a widget. So this, all of this is added to the DOM just to add that anchor tag. And the reason Elementor does this is because it's a page builder, so every single widget has controls for uh, margin, padding, all these other options here. Uh, you know, some of them will have some additional style things like color, background, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and you would select that through, uh, you know, just these settings here. Now it's got to apply that somehow. So where it applies it to is the wrappers around the element that it's added. So let's look for a button, for example. You'd expect a button to be just a button. If we look at that button, we've actually got an elemental button, which is a span, which sits inside another span, which sits inside a uh, anchor tag, which sits inside another wrapper, 
which sits inside a widget container. It's got an overlay element above that. Uh, and then we've got the widget above that. So if we wanted to target just the uh, span there, we're looking at a class of element or button text. So we would try to make it fairly specific. So we might call it a, uh, you know, element or button link. Uh, and then element or button text might be our path, our CSS path to get to that. But this is how we find what we need to do to target it. So that's pretty much it. I hope that uh, helps uh, understand targeting through CSS a little bit better. We're not talking about CSS itself, uh, just the targeting of those uh, CSS, uh, sorry, of those DOM elements for CSS using Elementor. WP Get. Get found. Real people, real solutions. Call us on 07 3708 1021. Visit us at www.wpget.net.